Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to give you my current top 5 Raspberry Pi desktop operating systems. So let's boot up our favourite single board computer and get started. Right, at number 5 we arrive in Ubuntu and specifically Ubuntu Desktop 21.10 running on a Raspberry Pi 400. Ubuntu Desktop is generally very stable and provides a good user experience, with one caveat which is if you go into display settings and change things there you frequently cause quite spectacular crashes, so stay away from display settings. Ubuntu Desktop is also the heaviest distro here and is therefore only recommended to be used on a Raspberry Pi with 4GB of RAM or more. And it should be noted that all desktop versions of Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi are 64-bit. Included with the operating system is quite a lot of useful software and if we go across to the dock on the left we find at the top access to the Firefox web browser, the Thunderbird email client, our file manager, which is a nice little thing, looks very uh, nice to use that, I do like the file manager here. We've got a rhythm box for audio stuff, playing music and things. We've got LibreOffice Writer, which comes up pretty quickly. I would note all of the operating systems in this video are being run from a standard Extreme microSD card, so you can make your own judgments on relative performance. And then we've also got down here the software store, the help system and the trash can. And then at the base of the screen on the left here we've got access to all other applications on the system which we can scroll around like that and we can also access different desktops. So let's run up the Firefox web browser because we want to check out browser performance, very important in a modern operating system and it didn't come up that badly, that wasn't too bad was it? And I'm sure you want to see some video playback because a modern desktop operating system has to be able to handle not just text, images and audio, but also video playback including streaming media. So we'll go to bookmarks and bring up my sample 1080p clip and get it playing full screen. There we are, and it took a bit of time to get to that point. And streaming media playback at 1080p in Ubuntu desktop is very interesting to me because it looks far better than the stats would indicate. The stats here tell us that there's lots and lots of drop frames, but the video is still pretty watchable. And we do have to remember, as I said already, that Ubuntu Desktop is the heaviest of the distros we're looking at in this video. But even so, video playback is usable. And so there we are, this is Ubuntu Desktop on a Raspberry Pi. In my view, the desktop operating system for the Raspberry Pi with the most professional feel but it's also rather resource intensive, which means it can be a little sluggish, which is why it's placed at number 5 on this list. Moving on, at number 4 we have Ubuntu Mate, which is based on Ubuntu but with the Mate desktop added. As you can see by default we have a very helpful menu screen when we first boot up to help us get things set up. And if you're wondering, a desktop is named after a South American drink called Mate, which is made from a tree called Yerba Mate. Ubuntu Mate can be run on any Raspberry Pi with 1GB of RAM or more, with both 32-bit or ARM HF and 64-bit or ARM64 versions available. The 64-bit version is recommended for Pis with 2GB of RAM or more, and if we visit the Ubuntu Mate website by running up Firefox like that, it'll hopefully come up fairly quickly. There we are, and here on this page we can go to Compatibility Check, where we find these very useful tables which let us know which versions of Ubuntu Mate run on which particular Raspberry Pi models. And if you're wondering, here I'm running Ubuntu Mate 21.10 on a Pi 400. As we can see, by default, the Mate desktop has both bottom and top panels, with a standard Ubuntu menu top right, as we can see, but it's also got a standard start menu type of configuration top left, which gives us access to all the pre-installed applications. And there's a reasonable amount of stuff here, various things we might need, graphic software, internet stuff, 
We have LibreOffice again, various preferences, standard video, system tools, things like that. There's not masses of bloat here, but there are things you'll find useful. And uh, let's just run up LibreOffice to again see how fast that is on this particular system. Can we remember how fast it was on Ubuntu? And that was pretty similar coming up. Of course, the speed of the micro SD card is the same and it was loading files, but that gives you an indication of how rapidly that can come up. And overall, I've always found using Ubuntu Mate to be a very calming experience. And it also runs a bit faster than Ubuntu on a Raspberry Pi. Just look at the menu here. It's very, very fluid how this thing works. Oh, and you're probably wondering about the YouTube playback test. So let's go back into Firefox and bring up my test clip in YouTube, which will be sitting hopefully in my bookmarks over here. And playback is very usable. We have got drop frames reported, although they're largely, I think, in setting things up. It's now running along with very few drop frames. And playback here is perfectly serviceable. At number three, we have Twister OS which is the coolest distro on this list. Whilst it's currently 32-bit only, Twister OS was designed for the Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi 400 and can have install issues on earlier Pi models. However, what Twister OS also has are two very cool tricks up its sleeve. And the first of these is the ability to change the theme. If you just click on Twister theme over there, look, change your theme. And if I click on next, you will see we can change the theme. So for example, if we want things to look like Windows XP, we can click on there. And lo and behold, we're now logging back in to Twister OS looking like Windows XP. Oh look, it wants to update itself. Let's, uh, let's do that later on. But uh, isn't it great to be back in the operating system that looks like Windows XP? And it really does very much look like Windows XP down to the file manager and uh, everything else. Let's just try a couple of others. Let's go across to the theme twister again. We can make it look like, for example, a Windows 7 over here. There we are again with the menus as we would expect them to look and the file manager in that particular style. Oh, this is cool. And let's just do a third one. Let's go back to theme twister. And uh, what should we have? Should we have a Mac light one? Let's have a, that one over there. I twist to Sir will have in a light version of that. Which is all very clever indeed. Although I think I'm going to go back to the classic, the default Twister OS theme. And regardless of which theme you choose, Twister OS has got a lot of pre-installed software. So for example, if we look in the menu here under graphics, we see it's got the GIMP photo editor pre-installed and under games, there are lots of programs and utilities. So Twister OS is a great operating system for Raspberry Pi gamers. And of course, we've got lots of accessories, very responsive menus here as well. It's a nice fluid system. We've got the standard internet and multimedia stuff, loads of settings, loads and loads and loads of settings here in Twister OS various system tools, and of course, we've got an Office suite. Let's launch LibreOffice Writer, just for consistency with looking at the previous distros. This has come up pretty quick. Yes, here we are back in a word processor, the most important program on any computer. And moving on to repeat our other previous test, we will do a bit of YouTube 1080p playback, launching the browser here, which is Chromium, as you can see, but came up nice and quickly. So let's just go across to my standard test clip. And here we are, we've got that running. And performance here I think is pretty comparable to Ubuntu and Ubuntu Mate. We do have drop frames, but we've also got YouTube streaming media playback, which I think is perfectly acceptable. I think this will be watchable on a Raspberry Pi. But I'm going to come out of YouTube because the final thing I want to show you is the second cool trick we have in Twister OS because I told you it had two really cool tricks up its sleeve. And the first one's to do with changing the theme as we've already looked at. But the second one is that if we look in the menu here back under games, as you might have noticed, we've got a lot of pre-installed emulation software. Things like DOSBox for running DOS programs, but also Box86 
and Wine, which allow us to run at least some older Windows applications. And as I demonstrated in my Twister OS video, these allowed me to install an early version of Adobe Audition here on a Raspberry Pi. And I even loaded in and played a very familiar audio file. Taking silver in my ranking, we have Manjaro. And if Twister OS is the coolest distro on this list, Manjaro is the one that's actually got me out of trouble. Specifically, when I last spent a week using a Raspberry Pi as my only PC, other distros were not stable enough to deliver a complex presentation. And so I changed to Manjaro as the Pi operating system that I ran when teaching 300 students in a lecture theatre. And indeed, I'd characterise Manjaro as a very solid and a very stable desktop operating system that always works and always works well. If we launch the Firefox web browser, down there we're going to go to the Manjaro website. It'll come up in a second. Here we are, very exciting. And we can see here under Editions and ARM that Manjaro is available for the Raspberry Pi 4 in a 64-bit version only and with either a GNOME, a KDE Plasma or a Mate desktop. And here I've opted for a KDE Plasma desktop, which we've got over here, as you can see. And if I tried the GNOME desktop, it would look a bit like this. And we've seen a Mate desktop a few minutes ago in Ubuntu Mate. So let's do the playback test of 1080p YouTube video. Let's go to bookmarks and uh, bring that up. And here we are, it is playing back. And playback is very similar to the three distros we've looked at already. We have got dropped frames, but despite that, the video playback here is, I think, usable in 1080p on the Raspberry Pi. So let's come out of this like that and take a look at the bundle software, which we find down here in the menu. And as you can see, there's various things here. Educationally, oh, we've got LibreOffice Maths. We've got a few graphical things, bit of internet stuff, as you would expect, multimedia. We have got LibreOffice Writer. We've got a launch LibreOffice Writer, haven't we? We've been doing it previously. Let's do it again. Go back into the world of word processors. And uh, here we are. And let's do a thing we haven't done in the other distros, write in hello, and of course, make it very big indeed which is of course for law when making this type of video, we've got to do it. So we've done it here in my second ranked Raspberry Pi desktop operating system, which is Manjaro. Guess what? My top Raspberry Pi desktop operating system is this Raspberry Pi OS. Certainly, it's not as professional looking as other distros we've seen here, and nor is it as cool. But Raspberry Pi OS is fast, efficient, stable, and very well supported. It's also now available in three desktop versions, Raspberry Pi OS, which is 32-bit, Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, and Raspberry Pi OS Legacy, which is also 32-bit. So, which should you choose? Well, in general, I'd recommend Legacy for Pi 1, Pi 2, and Pi 0 models, and the 32-bit version for the Pi 3, and for 1GB or 2GB Pi 4s. But then, for all other Pis, I'd recommend the 64-bit edition, which is what we're running here on the Pi 400 that we've been using in all of our tests. And if we run up the Chromium browser, up there, the default browser here in Raspberry Pi OS, we go into the operating system page, and I want to point out here that Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit version comes either with desktop or with desktop and recommended software. However, the 64-bit version down here either comes with a desktop or without, but there isn't a desktop version with the recommended software. And I find that rather strange because it means if we go over here to the menu and look in software, we have installed here programming tools. That's very good to see. Chromium browser. VLC Media Player, Image Viewer, few accessories, including the Raspberry Pi Diagnostics Tool and Card Copier, which are very useful. But we don't have, for example, LibreOffice. We don't have any Office applications pre-installed. 
This said, we can go down to Preferences and Recommended Software. Here we are, and I can now select, for example, Office. LibreOffice is here, I can click to install, and I can apply. And there we are, LibreOffice is now installed. So if we come out of this and we go to the menu, lo and behold, we've got Office. We can launch LibreOffice Writer, which should prevent any major breaches of the space-time continuum. And of course, it'll take a second to launch. It is the first launch. Actually, that was very fast, wasn't it? I do not want tips on startup. Who ever thought that was a good idea? Anyway, and I don't want the release notes either. We have managed, though, to get into LibreOffice Writer here in Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. But the final thing we haven't done is to do my YouTube playback test. So let's actually go into bookmarks and bring up the clip. And here we are playing back our familiar piece of video. And I think the playback is better than we've seen in the previous operating systems. And this is because we've got hardware accelerated video playback here in the Chromium browser in Raspberry Pi OS. Certainly, there are some drop frames showing in Stats for Nerds, but they're only from the start of the playback. And now that things have settled down, there are no dropped frames. So there we have it, my current top five Raspberry Pi desktop operating systems. And there are more, including Ambien, Diet Pi, Gentoo, MX Linux, and OpenSUSE. But do you agree with the top five choices I've made in this video? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.